Almost 40 years after the Voyager 2 flyby, a new mystery has emerged from the data. A tiny moon orbiting Uranus. How could a world that had eluded detection for decades suddenly appear on the horizon? In early 2025, the James Webb Space Telescope captured something even Voyager itself had missed. A faint dot moving along with Uranus's rings. What is this hidden moon? And why did it remain unnoticed for so long? Today, we'll learn how Webb's infrared eye tracked this elusive object and how astronomers confirm that it is real, distinguishing it from background noise. We'll also map the orbit of this tiny satellite tucked within Uranus's complex ring system and explore what its position reveals about the planet's turbulent past. How does this discovery blur the line between the rings and moons of Uranus? Let's find out. Uranus has long been a planet full of surprises. As an ice giant tipped on its side, it has a delicate system of rings and moons. Before this discovery, Uranus was known to have 28 moons, ranging from large icy worlds hundreds of miles in diameter to small inner moonlets only a few dozen miles across. Many of these small satellites hug the planet closely, sitting just beyond the rings. Finding these tiny moons is extremely difficult because they get lost in the bright glare of the planet and its rings. In fact, no new Uranian moons had been discovered since 2003. Even though dozens had been found around Jupiter and Saturn in the last two decades. The last major wave of discoveries happened during NASA's Voyager mission, which in January 1986 gave us our first close-up view of the planet. Images captured by Voyager 2 revealed 10 new moons and two new rings, uncovering a densely packed, rapidly changing, and perhaps unstable system. But Voyager's cameras had their limits. Small, faint objects only a few miles across were beyond their detection capabilities. After Voyager, the Hubble Space Telescope detected a couple of additional inner moons in 2003, Tiny, Cupid, and Mab. But even Hubble had its constraints. Fairly recently, in 2023, scientists discovered a new moon using large ground-based telescopes, the first in two decades. That moon, designated S-2023 U1, is only about five miles in diameter and so far out that it takes roughly 680 days to orbit the planet. To find it, astronomers had to stack dozens of images and use special processing methods to pick out a moving dot from the background noise. Clearly, Uranus's system of satellites still held secrets waiting for the right technology to reveal them. This is where the James Webb Space Telescope enters the stage. Although Webb was built to study the distant universe in infrared, its sharp vision and light gathering power make it an excellent tool for probing the edges of our own solar system. In 2025, a Webb General Observer program led by Dr. Maryam El Mutamid, targeted Uranus to study its rings and nearby environment. The goal was to use Webb's infrared camera for long exposures of the planet and see how much we'd been missing. This campaign essentially pointed a new set of eyes at Uranus, a far more sensitive set of eyes than from Voyager or Hubble. And with that context in mind, Let's see how JWST searched for this hidden moon. Spotting a tiny moon against the glare of Uranus is like trying to see a firefly next to a spotlight. 
Yet Webb managed it by taking a series of long exposure images and tracking anything that moved like a moon. On February 2, 2025, the Near Infrared Camera, or NERCAM, took 10 long exposure images, each lasting about 40 minutes. In total, this amounted to about six hours of continuous observation of the planet. These deep infrared images were captured with a wideband filter to maximize the brightness of faint objects. Webb effectively watched Uranus over a full rotation, patiently collecting every trace of weak light. To keep the planet's bright glow from overwhelming the view, the team applied clever image processing. Each frame was a balancing act. Uranus shines brightly in infrared, and in Webb's view, the rings glow even though they're dark. The small moons are much fainter still. The final result was a composite made from three differently processed images, one tuned for the bright planet, one for the glowing rings, and one for the tiny moons. Comparing the images in time-lapse sequence revealed a new moon. It looked like a faint dot shifting position against the background stars and galaxies. The object was visible in all 10 long exposure images, moving exactly as an inner moon of the planet should. The team immediately realized they had found something remarkable. That moving dot, only six miles wide, had been detected from nearly three billion kilometers away. It's now been given the name of S-2025U1, which means it is a Uranian satellite discovered in 2025. For simplicity, let's call it U1. However, the discovery of a new moon was only the beginning. The next step was to figure out what it looks like. Even with a 21-foot telescope, the satellite appears in the image as nothing more than a dot of light. How can we estimate its size from a dot? The key is brightness. The brightness of the dot combined with the assumed reflectivity of its surface, its albedo, provides an approximate size. Astronomers assume that the object reflects light in a way similar to Uranus's other small inner moons. These moons are typically dark, comparable to dirty ice or cold gray snow, reflecting only a few percent of sunlight. Based on this assumption, the brightness of the new object suggests a diameter of about six miles. Now that's tiny, roughly the size of a small city or the length of Manhattan Island, making it one of the smallest satellites ever observed around this ice giant. To put this in perspective, this moon is smaller and far dimmer than any previously known inner moon of Uranus. The previous record holder among Uranus's inner moons had a diameter of about 11 miles. U1 is about half that size, and its reflected light is correspondingly dimmer it is no wonder it went undetected for so long. Voyager 2 simply had no chance of seeing something this faint. In fact, the discoverers note that U1 is well below Voyager 2's detection threshold. The spacecraft's cameras in 1986 could not possibly have captured such a small, dark object against Uranus's glare. Even ground-based telescopes struggled until very recently with the faint glow that drowned out by noise. Detecting this moon required both extreme sensitivity and long exposure times. There's still some uncertainty in the six-mile size estimate. If the moon is darker than assumed, it could be a little larger, and if it's unusually bright, it could be a little smaller. Future observations at different wavelengths may refine its albedo. For now, what we know is that U1 is only a few miles across in size. Its faint glow suggests that it's likely an icy body coated with a dark material, much like its siblings. It's remarkable 
that something so small can orbit a giant planet and yet hold clues to its history. So where exactly does this moon sit within Uranus's orbital system? U1 turned out to be in a very interesting place, right on the edge of the planet's main ring system. It orbits about 35,000 miles from the planet's center, lying in its equatorial plane. This places the satellite directly between the orbits of two previously known moons, Ophelia and Bianca. Ophelia, about 27 miles across, sits just beyond Uranus's outermost bright ring, acting as a shepherd for it. While Bianca, slightly larger and elongated in shape, lies a little farther out. U1 moves in the gap between them, essentially filling in a gap in the sequence of satellites. Its location is intriguing. The region is crowded and dynamically active. At such close proximity to the planet, U1 likely races around Uranus quickly, completing one orbit in about 10 hours, comparable to Ophelia's nine and a half hour orbit. The orbit appears nearly circular and aligned with the rings, which suggests that this moon probably formed near its current location rather than being a captured object that just wandered in. If it had been drawn in by the planet's gravity, its orbit would likely be more tilted or elongated. The fact that U1 lies between Ophelia and Bianca already tells us a lot. This object is now the 14th known member of Uranus's inner satellite system, which includes all the small moons orbiting inside Miranda's path. All 14 lie inward from the five major moons, Miranda, Ariel, Umbriel, Titania, and Oberon. And so, U1 joins a tightly clustered family, circling in a critical zone where rings and moons directly interact. The discovery of U1 goes beyond adding another moon to Uranus's satellite tally. It points to an inner system that's richer and more complex than we realized. Uranus already held the record for the largest number of small inner moons of any planet. And these satellites are intricately tied to the planet's rings. As one member of the Discovery team, Matthew Tescarino explained, their complex interrelationships with the rings hint at the chaotic history that blurs the boundary between a ring system and a system of moons. What does this mean? Essentially, the rings and moons of Uranus are not distinct populations. They have likely exchanged material and even transformed from one state into the other over time. A ring can be the remains of a shattered moon and a moon can be an accreted ring. There is a continuous progression from dust and boulders in the rings to moonlets and moons. For example, Uranus has a faint outer ring called the U-ring, which is sustained by a small moon named Mab. Meteorite impacts on Mab knock dust from its surface, replenishing the U-ring with fresh material. As old ring dust drifts away, new dust from Mab takes its place. A beautiful balance of give and take. This is similar to how Saturn's moon Enceladus feeds the E-ring. Another case in 2005, scientists noticed an unnamed ring inside the orbits of Uranus's moons. It was not obviously sustained by any satellite, which suggested the presence of an invisible belt of bodies mostly a collection of fragments too small to detect, perhaps the remains of a moon that had been destroyed in Uranus's past. If a moon had broken apart long ago because of a collision or orbital chaos, the debris could have become both new rings and new smaller moons. The planet's inner moons show signs of this kind of chaotic interaction. Their orbits can shift over time, and some are packed so tightly together that they may be unstable over millions of years. For example, tiny Cupid passes 
within only 500 miles of Belinda's orbit, a cosmic close shave that could one day lead to a collision. With this in mind, the existence of U1 strengthens the idea that Uranus's system is full of hidden matter. If a six-mile moon could remain concealed, then smaller ones almost certainly exist as well. Perhaps a swarm of mile-sized moonlets. But for now, though, we only see the brighter portion of the population, which gradually transitions into the dust particles of the rings. How many fragments does it take to make a moon? Where is the line between a dense dust ring and a cluster of tiny satellites? Uranus is the perfect place to explore these questions because it blurs that boundary more than any other planetary system we know. Future telescopes or dedicated missions may well bring even more surprises. Since the Voyager era, Uranus and Neptune have been relatively neglected. But in the recent Planetary Science Decadal Survey, a flagship mission to Uranus in the 2030s was given priority status. The discovery of a new moon adds momentum. It shows that the ice giant is an active target worthy of exploration. By the time an orbiter arrives, hopefully in the 2040s, we'll already have a list of moons to investigate, including this newborn member. That mission will be able to photograph U1 directly, confirm its properties, and very likely uncover more tiny satellites. Traditionally, Uranian moons are named after characters from Shakespeare or Alexander Pope. The team will submit a proposal to the International Astronomical Union to assign S2025 U1 an official name. They joke that they're getting a lot of culture while searching for a Shakespearean name for such a tiny moon. Will it be another fairy from A Midsummer Night's Dream or a minor figure from The Tempest? In any case, through the lens of infrared vision, scientists have transformed a faint pixel of light into a genuine new world in Uranus's system. We have traced how it was discovered confirmed and placed into the mosaic of surrounding rings and moons. This discovery not only answers a 40-year-old question, what did Voyager miss, but also underscores how much there is yet to learn about the outer planets. As we prepare for future missions and continue observations, U1 will remind us that the mysteries of our solar system are far from exhausted. Sometimes all it takes to reveal them is a fresh perspective. <laughs>